Patricia Hamer. Welcome to Abiding Faith Christian Center's broadcast. My husband, Pastor Rodney, and I are excited about bringing you the Word of God today. You will be renewed in your mind and built up in your spirit. So get ready, grab your Bible, cell phone, iPad, or however you access the Bible, pencil and paper, and get ready to receive the Word of God. And while you're getting ready, I would like to inform you that Abiding Faith Christian Center Thursday Night Bible Study is located at Eagle Ridge Square Community Center. That's 6101 Eagle Ridge Lane, Flint, Michigan, 48505. We invite you to come and visit with us on Thursdays at 7 p.m. Matter of fact, if you're close by, you still have time to make it to the Bible study. So now, here's Pastor Rodney. Let's get ready to receive the Word of God. Hallelujah. Well, praise the Lord, saints. Here we are again at another Thursday night Bible study here at Abiding Faith Christian Center. We're so glad that you tuned in with us. We're so glad that you came to attend our, our Thursday night Bible study to this evening. Those of you on Periscope and those of you also that are viewing this on the videotape, uh, we indeed praise God. Thank you for tuning in with us for this exciting Thursday night Bible study that we've been studying. I'm going to log on to my, using my notebook tonight, praise God. I thought I, I um, what do you call, upgrade on the way I minister, praise God. And I'm using my tablet. Got a new tablet from Microsoft Surface Pro 3, praise God. So I'm ready for bear to minister the word of God. And I hope you're ready also. Amen. But before we do that, we're going to bow our heads and pray. And then we're going to get straight into the word. Amen. So let's bow our heads and pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the Holy Spirit that is in the service tonight. And the Holy Spirit that's on the inside of us. I thank you for him giving revelation knowledge to us for, through, uh, of the word of God as I minister under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Father, I thank you for giving to the hearers of the word tonight, here in this service, on Periscope and on the video, that you would give them hearing ears to hear and hearts to understand the revelation knowledge of your divine purpose and your divine plans for the lives of the believers here on the earth. Now, Father, I thank you for the Holy Spirit rising up on the inside of me and that he will think through my mind and speak through my lips and minister to your children tonight. Now, Father, I thank you for doing it because it's your will that not only that men and women and boys and girls be saved, but it's your will for them to come into the knowledge of the truth. And Father, your word is the truth. So I thank you that as I open up the word to them tonight, they'll be filled with the knowledge of your will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding and give you all the glory and honor for it as a result. Now, Satan, I render you notice you'll not hinder any person in the sound of my voice from hearing or receiving the word of God, for I bind you in the name of Jesus Christ. And now, Holy Spirit, have free course in this service to minister to the hearts of the people, the hearers of the word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Well, praise the Lord. Well, as I said before, we're going to continue. And I think we're on the end of our lesson called um, How, praise God, let me find my lesson right here. Praise the Lord. How to live stress-free in a troubled, filled world is the lesson we started off with about four weeks ago, and this is our, this is our, um, this is our fifth week of teaching on this lesson, and I believe it's the last week that we're going to be teaching on it, on how to live stress-free in a troubled, filled world. Uh, we found out that our foundational scripture, our foundational scripture, praise God. Hold one second here. I'm having a little technical difficulties with my tablet for some reason or the other. <laughs> my wife said it's me, but praise God, I don't think it's me. I think it's the tablet. 
All right, all right. So what's we going? What's going on here now? Okay, you're gonna have to let me have that sheet of paper that I gave you this morning, honey. And I'll have to go from there instead of trying to use this tablet. For some reason or the other, it is not acting the way that I want it to act. So we're going to go to another route here. Okay? Amen, amen, amen. All right. Praise the Lord. Well, thank God for backups. Amen? Amen. We got backups on the sheet of paper. I downloaded on my tablet. But praise God, I'm going to have to use my backup. Have to use my backup. Praise the Lord. Come right on in. Praise the Lord. Use my backup. At least that's what I'm saying. I'm going to use, okay, yeah, I got my backup. My backup's ready. All right, we want to turn to our Bibles to the book of, um, the book of Colossians. Actually, yeah, the book of Colossians, and then we're going to move forward from there. Colossians, actually Matthew's 11th chapter, the 28th chapter, verse 28, and then we're going to drop on down to the book of James uh, chapter 1, verses 22, because I, that's where we left off at last week when we ended our Bible study back then. But we want to go there right now. So turn in your Bibles to the book of James, the first chapter. And I'm going to try to find it here in my new tablet, praise God, that he, I just bought. <laughs> praise God. All right, the book of James. At least my tablet's working. Hallelujah. Okay, so we got James. I said James, right? Yes. And we want to go to chapter 1. Okay, so I'm in chapter 1. I want to hide this. Okay, make that large and make this large so I can see with my eyes, praise God. I got this treasure and earthy vessel, praise God, but the vessel is sure enough getting older. All right, that's James chapter 1. Now remember, our lesson we've been studying on is called How to Live Stress-Free in a Trouble-Filled World. Because in these last days, in these days, this world is full of trouble. We got the the presidential election that's going on and all the things that's happening there and trying to figure out who's the one that we're supposed to trust and vote on. But you know what? That's not really a problem for us because the Bible says to pray, ask, and you shall receive, seek, and you shall find, and knock, and it shall be open. Amen? In other words, God will tell us who to vote for in this election. We just need to pray. And then once we pray, we're going to have to spend time listening to God and to find out what, who, which one, which direction he leads us in. And that's for everything else in life. Amen? Amen? We got all the terrorist activities going on and wars and rumors of wars and just all kind of stuff that's happening in our society. But that's what the world is supposed to do. Jesus says in this world we're going to have tribulations. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Not only that, he talked about the wars and rumors of wars and earthquakes and diver places. Signs in the heaven above and the earth beneath was going to happen. He said these are the signs of the end time, of the coming, of the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen? Amen. And he said, when he said, when, those, when you see those things happening, what did he say? He didn't say, look down. He said, look up. Amen? So, I mean, we need to hold our head up high looking up. Why? Because even though this is a trouble-free world, we can live stress-free in the trouble-free world. But we have to follow the instructions. Now, I did tell you to turn to James, but what I want you to do is I want you to go back and I want you to find Matthews. And let's go to Matthews because that's been our, that's been our, our, our foundational scriptures in the book of Matthews that we want to look at. We want to look in the book of Matthews and we want to see what Matthew says right here concerning hallelujah hallelujah is stress free in a trouble filled world. Oh glory be to God. Hallelujah. Okay Matthews and we said Matthews the 11th chapter and we want to look at verses 28 29 and 30. Verses 28, 29, and 30. Now notice what Jesus says to us. And this is for every human being on the earth. And is also included for the Christians who have already been born again. In order for us to live a stress-free life in a trouble-filled world, we're going to have to be obedient to the Word of God. And look what he says here in the book of Matthew, <coughs> the 11th chapter, verses 28, 29, and 30. He says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me because I am meek and lowly in heart and you shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is what? Light. Now notice he says one of the absolute necessity for a person to live stress free in the trouble filled world is that you're going to have to come to Jesus with all of your cares, all of your troubles, all the things that have you heavy laden and burdened down. You're going to have to come. Amen. 
and that's an act of the individual wills. Now you can try to work out the situation yourself and a lot of times we've done that. We tried to work it out on our own selves because we've been used to doing that, especially before we became born again. Amen? Amen. And then after we become born again, we've still been trying to work it out on our own self. You know, God, I got the little things, but I'm going to get you to take care of the big things. Amen? And then sometimes when we get into the big things, we still try to solve those problems. But no, he said, come unto me all you that labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. And then he says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Now, I emphasize at the beginning of this lesson that the importance of taking the yoke of Jesus upon you and the way you take your yoke upon Jesus is by learning about the word because Christ and the word is one. If I'm going to take his yoke upon me, then I'm going to take his word upon me, which means obedience to his word. <clears throat> Some of you may know a little thing about you know, living on the farm. I don't. I was born in the city, but I know a little bit about on the farm. And I know about the oxen or the ox or the mule or the horse that you put a plow on and stuff. And you put a yoke around the neck of them, that, that, that ox or that mule or horse, two or one, whatever you have. And you put that yoke on them with a rein on that yoke for what purpose? So you can pull those reins and pull that yoke in the direction you want them cows or that mule or the horse to go to, right? So that's what the yoke is for. So the Lord Jesus Christ can steer you in the direction that he wants us to go. Amen? Amen. Now, when he says to us, when we come down and we, we're stressed out and, you know, we, we confuse. He says in the book of uh, uh, 1 Peter, the fifth chapter, and verse number six. Now, we know that the scriptures were written by the inspiration of God. So is God speaking to us or is Jesus speaking to us? Because that's what the scriptures are. The word of God in Christ is one. So when it says, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, that's Philippians. Let your requests be made known to God. Now that's Jesus speaking to us and that's his yoke that he wants us to take upon ourselves. When he says to be careful for nothing or do not have any, uh, do not have any uh, anxiety about anything, the Amplified Translation says. Now he's telling us to do that. And what we're doing when we make a decision to obey that verse of scripture in the times of crisis is we're putting our yoke, up, he's putting his yoke upon us so that he can lead us into the direction or the path of peace. Because that's what his intent is to bring us in the path of peace. Not to be stressed out, full of fear and anguish and anxiety. No, that's why he said in the beginning when he told the Apostle Paul, inspired him to write that to the Philippian believers in uh, chapter 6, I believe it was. And he says, he says, be careful for nothing. Do not fret or have any anxiety about anything. Now, from my understanding, anything means anything. Amen. Whether it's big or small, anything means anything. Amen? Amen? Well, what we're doing now is we're putting our yoke upon us, and we're, we're putting our yoke upon us, and we're learning things, too. See, this is one of the importance of getting the Bible, because we're learning something. What are we learning? We're learning about the yoke of Jesus, which his yoke is easy, and his burden is light. Now, you'll never know about his yoke if you're not spending time in the Word. Amen. You'll never know about his yoke unless you commit yourself up under those who he put in the fivefold ministries, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, and they're anointed to teach the word of God because that's how, the, that's how God has set up his kingdom. Amen? And so that you can come and you can learn the word. Maybe you're not knowledgeable about some things. Maybe there's some things you may know about it because you know this Peter said in the book of Peter, and I believe it's in the second chapter, he said, I will not be negligent to put you in remembrance though you may know these things, to stir up your pure heart to remembrance. You remember that scripture in the book of 1 Peter? Peter talks about that when he's ministered. Let me see if I can find that in my new tablet, praise God. And if I can't find it, y'all gonna have to be merciful on me. I'm, I've been pushing this button to go trying to locate, say hi. Okay, show. Okay, so I said Peter. So let's find Peter here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get it. I think it's 2 Peter. And let's try chapter 1. And let's see if I can find it here. Okay. Yeah, 2 Peter chapter 1, and look at verse number 12. Now, I'm being led by the Holy Spirit, because this is not even in my notes, but it's applicable. Amen? Amen. Praise God. God wants to give us, his, give us his word, praise God, so that he can edify, comfort, and exalt us. <clears throat> now, here in 2 Peter chapter 1, and verse number 12, Peter writes, and he says this. He says, wherefore, therefore, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though you know them, and be established in the present truth. Did you see that? 
Now, Peter's talking to the church at this moment, but see, what was written by Peter on the inspiration of the Holy Spirit was written for us. All scriptures given by the inspiration of God is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instructions in righteousness or instructions in doing God, things the so way God wants to do. what I'm saying it. is here is that when the apostles, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher is ministering, which is important for us to come and sit up under those anointed and called by God, is so that we can stir up your hearts and minds, pure minds to remembrance, even though you may know some of these things. Amen? You may be neglecting to do it. You may have forgotten to do it, but that's okay. That's what we're, we're for in the body of Christ. That's why we need one another. Every joint supplied to the edifying of the body as a whole. We all have a purpose. Amen? I know what my purpose. You have a purpose. We all have a purpose in the body of Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise God. My wife's purpose right now for a body of a Christian is to do everything when we open up service right now. Now that's her purpose right now. She does a wonderful job. Amen? Amen. She does the intro. She sets up the cameras and stuff. I mean, she's just a blessing. Praise God. But praise God, we all have a part to play in the body of Christ. Amen? So I wanted to share that with you. So when we go back over to Matthew's 11 chapter, he said, come unto me all ye that labor and heavy laden, I will give you rest. He said, take my yoke upon you and learn, learn. Learning, as I said before, is an acquisition of information. You're going to learn something, you're going to have to acquire some information. That's what learning is all about. It's acquired information. What kind of information? Biblical information. Information that comes from the Word of God. We're not talking about uh, uh, academic information. We're talking about biblical information which comes from the Word of God. Amen? Amen. Uh, there's academic information is good. It's, it's good in its place. Amen? When you're operating in this world, in this natural realm and stuff, you know, and, you know, because God knows that, you know, he that doesn't work ought not eat, so he knows you need to have a job. Amen? Amen. Praise God. A man that don't take care of his own family is worse than an infidel. If he ain't got no job, you an infidel. You need to get a job. You need to get some ed education so you can get a job. Amen? <laughs> Amen. Not, right, not the right way to pronounce it, but you understand what I'm talking about. You need to get a job. Amen? So what I'm saying is, praise God, though, that's, right, that's good in this place, but what we're talking about spiritual knowledge, biblical knowledge, that is very important for us to learn. So Jesus says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me here in verse number 29. Take my yoke upon you. And one of the things I have to emphasize, he tells us to do it. You are responsible to take the yoke of Jesus upon you and you're responsible to learn of him. And him is the word. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. This Bible is the word of God. You want to know about God? Then the Bible will tell you everything you need to know about God. And the Bible says God is love. He loved. He so loved the world. Amen? Amen. That's what you know about God. He's love. God is not the God. He's not the one that hurts people. He's not the one that destroys people's lives. He does not, not the one that makes people's hearts sad. That's the job of the devil. The devil does that. God is a good God. Amen? And he wants the best for your life. Praise God. And the Bible tells us that. Amen? Amen. Speaking to the little kids, praise God, because they need to know that. Now listen, we said you must come to Jesus with all your labors, overburdened cares, and the things that you have that have you heavy laden. And you must take his yoke upon you. We talked about scriptures in the Luke 10 chapter where Jesus says, you know, that once you, you, once you invite into life, you must lay aside your cares and troubles like Martha and Mary. And Jesus went to Martha and Mary's house. Mary said to the seed of Jesus to hear the word. We talked about that in the scriptures. Now, last week we left off in the book of James, the first chapter, because we were emphasizing, and I know I spent a long time on this, of the importance of you learn, getting the word and learning the word. But the Holy Spirit led me down this route because people want help. But they don't realize that their help is based upon the knowledge of the word. Their help comes from the word. Our help as a Christian comes from the word. In fact, the help to the world comes from the word. What do you mean come from the word, pastor? The help of the world comes from the world coming to know that Jesus came to seek and save that which is lost. That's what the Word tells us. The Word also tells us that if you want to contact God, there is a way to contact Him which is called faith. And faith is based upon the knowledge of God's Word. And prayer is based upon faith, knowing how to pray according to the Word of God. Not just mouthing our words. Mark eleven twenty four. 24, what things soever you desire. When you pray, believe you receive them and you shall have them. Period. Once I've done that, I ain't got to go pray about that no more. Why? Because He said, believe you receive when you you pray. When, when I know that knowledge, I can pray with that knowledge, pray intelligently, and contact God and receive what I need from God, and all I got to do is wait back and thank Him every day until the manifestation comes. That's right. 
Now this is what the Bible teaches us. So this Bible is an answer for every Christian, but it's also the answer to the world. The Bible says the love of money is the root of all evil. Well, you got a lot of that in the world. That's why you got the evil in the world is the love of money. It's the love of money that got all this corruption in this world. All this evil in this world is because of the love of money. Can you say amen? amen. Praise God. I'm preaching myself happy. <laughs> I'm, I am. I'm preaching myself happy, praise God, because of the truth. Because the truth will make you free. Yes. Now, we're going to try to get over here on James. I got this new tablet. And thank God, I told my wife I was going. To, I'm going to stick with the. I'm going to stick with Microsoft. If Microsoft is, <laughs> they're going to lose me. They're going to lose my. I am bought it now. I'm too late now. Praise God. All right. Now we're in James, the first chapter, verse number 22. Here again, sharing some more scriptures about the, the responsibility of the individual believer in the Word of God, getting the Word of God, getting their minds renewed with the Word of God, being doers of the Word of God. Not only getting the Word inside of them, but you got to be doers of the Word. And this is what. James talks about. We must not just be hearers of the word, but we must be doers of it so that it can work in our behalf. That's what God wants the word to do, to work in your behalf. So he says in verse number 22, starting in verse number 22, in the Bible, he says, but be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Isn't it a shame that some Christians are self-deceived? Yeah, some Christians are self-deceived. They hear the word, they shout about the word, they jump up and down and do a jig about the word, but then when they leave out of there, man, you, you, they, they, they forget about the word. And, and, J, and, and the Holy Spirit says in the scripture, now, look, let's read the rest of it, because I'm getting ahead of myself. He says in verse number 23, for if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. That, that's the person that's self-deceived. See, it's not enough to shout about the word. You, you know, I um, praise the Lord, glory be to God. I love, I love the word. And I love shouting about the word. Because, I mean, you could hear somebody preaching their word. And, man, they get to preach upon it. Man, you just, man, you jump up and you want to, the Holy Ghost comes upon you. And you want to shout, glory be to God. And I love shouting. And I love dancing before the Lord. Done a lot of dancing. My wife seen me dance, praise God. <laughs> <laughs> My wife, she's more dignified than me, boy. But I'm the type of person, man, when the Holy Spirit comes upon me, I dance before the Lord. I'm like David. I'm not ashamed. But you know, all that dancing before the Lord from hearing the word and then leave out of there and go home and go to your job or go to the supermarket or go to the friend's house or go to your family's house or go on vacation or get on the train or whatever and you don't do the word in the circumstances of the life that comes, that comes against you because you're going to have some circumstances, adverse circumstances in life that's going to come against you when you leave that church building. Guaranteed. How do you know that, Pastor? Because Jesus talked about the sower that sows the word. He said the word that fell upon the stony ground were those who received the word with gladness. Oh, man, they danced about the word. Ooh, glory to God. Ooh, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. And then he says, he said, they receive the word with gladness, but have no root in themselves. See, they haven't become rooted in the word. You become rooted in the word through practice of the word. Yes. Not just hearing the word. You get knowledge from the hearing the word, but you got to apply the word, practice the word. It says, but then when tribulations and persecution arise, it says in the book of the Mother Peril, Matthews, um, Mark, and Luke, it talks about. It. He says, but when tribulations, when uh, tribulations, what did I say? Tribulations of what? When persecutions arise, it says arises for the word's sake, immediately they're offended and they draw back. See, they haven't become rooted in the word. Now, they heal the word, they shout about it, but they haven't become rooted. So you got to become rooted in the word. Now, here James talk about, he says, don't just be hearing the word, shout about the word, you know what I mean? And you don't do it. He says, you got to be doers of the word in order for the word to work for you. Because look what it says in verse number 26. He says, uh, no, verse 25. He said, but whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty. Now, you would, make it, you, you would think that the Holy Spirit kind of switched on the subject on us, but he didn't. Because did you know that the Word of God is a perfect law? Yes. Listen, a perfect law of liberty. 
The Word of God has never been given to us to bound us up. It has been given to us by Father to set us free. Yeah. Jesus said, listen, it's got a revelation. Jesus says, if you continue my word, then you're my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you shall make you what? Free. Not bound up. He said it will make you free. free yes. This is the perfect law of liberty he's talking about. He says, whosoever looketh into, but whosoever look into the perfect law of liberty. See, the truth will bring you liberty. Yes. God's word will bring you liberty. Amen. Some people think when you talk about taking that yoke up on you, that he want to he want to bound you up. He want to he want to he, he wants to, to, to uh, hold you captive and stuff and rule and reign over you. Yeah, he does because he knows what direction you need to go anyway. <laughs> You need somebody to direct your life. Amen? Yeah. I mean, he's the creator. Why not him? Praise God. He, in fact, he's the one that paved the way anyway. Didn't it say about the scripture says? The Bible, Jesus says, he says, in this world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. How did he do that? Came down here and walked in the world and lived in this world, operated in this world, just like you and I. He took up on the form of flesh and became like as you and I are. That's good news. So we can't say, well, you know, Jesus is the son of God. And, you know, since he God, you know, we just, you can't be like him. He was God. What do you mean? No, 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 no. Because he would never say in this world you will have tribulations, tests, and trials. But be of good cheer. Be of good cheer. Because I overcame the world so that I can go back and sit up in heaven at the right hand throne of God. But left you on your own. How are you going to be a good cheer about that? <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad you overcame, Jesus, but you know what? i got problems down here. <laughs> you know what I mean? It'd be nice if you come back down here and show me how you, got, you overcame. <laughs> well, see, he has too much love for us because of his love. Yes. His whole purpose for coming down here and offering up himself as a sacrifice yes. for the sins of mankind was because of love. Yes. And love thought about everything before he departed parted and went up and sit at the right hand throne of the Father. Yeah. What do you think about? Yeah. He showed us how to overcome in a trouble filled world. Yeah. Yeah. How did he do it? Praise God. By precept and example. Mm -hmm. By precept and example. Yeah. He taught us. That's what we have the gospels for. Inspired by the Holy Spirit from Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. Inspired to write about what Jesus did and how he operated in different circumstances. <laughs> and then he actually did it to show us how to overcome in a trouble filled world. Yeah. Glory be to God. He inspired the Apostle Paul and James and John and Luke and, 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 and Mark and, 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 and all the rest of them brothers, praise God, to write this Bible, to write the scriptures. And we have them together in, this, in what we call the Holy Bible, the canonicy, can, what is it? Canonized. It's canonized. All these books have been canonized together. Amen. For what purpose? So that we might know the truth. So the truth can make us free. Free from what? Tree free from a trouble-filled world. Yes. So he says, be doers of the word and not just hearers only. Don't just be a hearer of the word. Be a doer of the word. Now listen, to be a hearer of God's word and not a doer will cause us to be self-deceived as a Christian. In the crisis of life, instead of remembering what the word says to do, they revert back to the old way of thinking, believing, and acting. This is the reason that some Christians are always involved in worldly things or participating in fleshly sins. They go to church and hear the word and say amen to it, but then when they are gone away, they forget who they are in Christ. Amen? Because we are the righteous. Every Christian that's got become born again has been was born as the righteousness of God in Christ. Holy men and women of God. You are holy. You're not trying to be holy. You are holy. The only thing about it, when you don't know that you've been made free from sin, and that's what the scriptures tell us, and that's what we get to get, get our minds renewed with, we have been made free from sin. The book of Romans, the sixth chapter says, now being made free from sin, you have your fruits unto righteousness. Now we have to live that way. But see, if you don't know that's who you are, then you don't know how to act. If you don't know that you're righteous, you don't know, you, you, don't, you don't realize, well, I'm righteous. I'm supposed to act right. I'm holy. I'm supposed to act holy. I'm a holy man. I'm not trying. I am holy. I'm not trying to be holy. Holy men don't participate with things like that. Holy men don't look at things like that. Holy men don't talk like that. 
Holy men don't go to places like that. If I'm holy, then why would I want to go into unholy places? Listen to unholy things and, and read unholy things about unholy things. Or just act unholy. No, I'm holy, praise God. So I started acting like who I is. Why? Because I knew who I am. And I found out who I am through the scriptures. See, I'm being a doer of the word. And you know what? It prevents a lot of the stress of life from coming up on me. Things now that I don't have to fight off getting involved in stuff because I opened the door to it. Now the devil got, in, got involved with it. And now I got to believe God. Repent. Find I'm wrong. I repent. Lord, forgive me. Simply because I wasn't living the holy life. Now I got to exercise my faith and believe God for restoration in some area of my life. If I had been a doer of the word back there, it wouldn't have to happen. Amen? Now thank God for 1 John 1, 9. We're not talking about living a perfect life, but we are talking about striving for perfection. We're talking about pressing toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Now we can, we, if we don't, if we don't, if we're not taught this, then we'll never aim for this. If we're taught that we're only human, brother, and God understands, and you know we're only human, we have, and we have, we, you, I'm a man, you know, and a man, you know, a man have needs. No, the Bible never said you was a man. The Bible says you are the righteous of God in Christ. The Bible says you are a new creature in Christ Jesus, and the old things are past. The Bible says that you were dead, and you were once dead and trespassing the sins, but now you become a new creature in Christ Jesus. That's what the Bible says. The Bible says you are a spirit, you have a soul, and you live in a physical body. If I'm a spirit and my body's not me, then my spirit's will be ruling this body. And the Bible tells us what the body will do when you let the body just, just run amok. <laughs> Amen? Amen? We're talking about living stress-free in the trouble-filled world. Yeah. There are some requirements of taking the yoke of Jesus upon the learning of him, praise God. And it'll set you free. Yeah. I'm a free man, praise God, myself. Hallelujah. I'm free. Yeah. Glory be to God. Yeah. I mean, my wife can go out of town and be gone for months. She ain't got to worry about me, praise God. I'm going to be the same as she was before.